Greetings, all frog here. Let's play West of Loathing. All right, Susie, what do you want? I guess I just used to check this map once in a while. No ranches nearby? Not that I know about. There's a custard stand? Okay, it's the last custard stand. Oh my god. What should we do next? I believe we actually made it. Say, Smee looks a mite upset about something. What's going on, Smee? His fancy pants calls him the Emperor, and he won't let us build our track up to the station. Can you see if you can talk some sense into him? I'm on it. Who the heck are you? I'm Emperor Norton. I'm in charge of the city, and you can't build any train tracks here without my permission. An Emperor? Where's your crown, then? As it happens, I lost my dang crown. Fool thing didn't fit right anyway, but without it, I can't issue any official permits, and that means no rails for you. Unless, of course, you were giving me a new crown, a properly fitting one. I don't need crowns, sorry. Or I guess that just tears it, don't it? So not only do you not get that permit, but also he reaches into a pocket and grabs a handful of powder, which he throws in your face. Your eyes burn. Ha! Have a taste of my famous anti virus, sucker. Your vision goes all weird and you pass out. What was that? When you come to, Norton is gone, and so is the train. Where'd the train go? The lunatic stole it. He drove it off somewhere into the desert. Norton's gone off the rails. He points to a deep set of ruts off the side of the railroad tracks. You walk over to investigate, but you can't see it because of the weird hexagon thing your eyes are doing. You should probably get that checked out, boss. That Norton fellow said something about an antivirus? Maybe someone around here knows something about that. You can't focus on tracks well enough to follow him. This is only incredibly annoying. It's a nice station. Too bad there's no trains to it. Now playing Projectionist Wanted. Word on the street is that Projectionist Wanted 2 is already in the works. Alright, here's the bar. You don't look well. Uh, yeah, I can't see well either. Oh, did that nas rascal Norton do this to you? He was raving about some sort of antivirus earlier. Any idea how I can fix this? Do you know that fella named... Seriously. Fella named Roy Bean? The one that collects all those kinds of jelly beans? I think maybe he's got one made of honey and that could help with your predicament. That makes zero sense, but I suppose I'd better have a plan. Oh boy, another spoon. Let's go. It's with the excitement. I've given up. This is the last platoon in the game, and I'm not going to try and convince you not to be the most disgusting person on Earth anymore. Let's go. Let's do this. You kneel down on the floor and throw your arms around the spittoon, giving the Gracie Bass Bucket a great big hug. How about a kiss? Would you like to kiss it, too? You know it, baby. You pucker up and give the spittoon a great big kiss right on the rim. Is there tongue involved? Well, I'll leave that up to you, but even without it, it tastes like a burning horse. I know you do, friend. If it were legal in this country, I'd let you marry that spittoon and have a beautiful romantic honeymoon night with it, but unfortunately, you're going to have to settle for wearing it as a hat. Yes, please. You flip the brass bucket over and slap it onto your head, drenching yourself in hot brown tobacco spit. It washes down over your face and hair like a sewage waterfall, soaking your clothes, running down your collar, and slithering into your underwear and filling your boots. I can't even force myself to describe it in any more detail than that. You're the world's foulest human being. Congratulations. Uh, if I wear the spittoon hat, I get plus six mysticality and plus 11 spell damage. Good to know. Bit of a fight. Let's dive in. Um... Well, I can kill that guy right out, but she might be able to as well. Let's just, uh, let's hit this guy. Close. This bug eye thing is weird. Got some decent wine. And some decent tequila. I don't know what's all that's going on. Where's the piano? Sorry, no darts. What's this? It's a comedy flyer. Let's read it. I've discovered Wasco's Comedy Shack. Right. It's just nearly identical houses as far as the eye can see. Oh, of course it is. Look at that, that's cool. All right, let's go to Roy. Hey, Roy. It's a comedy stand. It's way up there. Hey, Roy. You gotta help me out, man. Pick up and deliver. Wow, no, no, uh, thing. Roy. Don't mention it. You've gotta be kidding me. Does this jelly bean really cost 6,000 meat? Well, normally it does, but I guess seeing as how you helped me without the bandits and goblins and damn dirty hippies, let's call her five. Yeah, I reckon better bite in a hurry before I change my mind. 
I got a honey jelly bean. It's made from a honey of a Paraguayan murder bee. Eat it. Your vision immediately clears. Modern medicine really is amazing. Okay. Back to Frisco. Fort unnecessary. Well, we're going. No. See, there's something before. Flag is flying at half flag. Someone arranged these cannons half agitedly and left them out in the rain. A harried looking young woman in a military outfit darts in front of the door and says, You enter. Oh no! I can't be having any more misfits in this jerk ward. You can either swear to me that you're halfway competent, heck, even a quarter, and that you'll help sort this crew of no-hopers, or you can turn right back around and march double time. Yeah, sure, whatever. All right, I'm, I'm going to hold you that, I promise. Captain Harry at Davenport. My name's Bear Autry. What's the problem, Cap? Problems. Welcome to Cap Fubar, where all the army's idiots and rejects are set so they're out of the way. I've had it to my eyeballs trying to run this place. Please help these morons figure out their malfunctions so they can muster out and here and leave me in peace. Give me some deets. I need to talk to them individually for more information, but the brief is, we've got a scout who's blind as a bat, a cook who can't figure out how to make corned beef hash on toast, a guy who can't load and fire a cannon without it blowing up or maybe shooting backwards, a guy who somehow, and I can't for the life of me figure it out, is too bow-legged to ride a horse, and a kid who was sent here because he can't figure out how to tie a bow tie. Oh, and just to put the icing on the cake, we have infinite goblins living in our storage shed. Well, okay, begin to see the scope of your complaint. Pal, you're not just whistling Dixie. So what'd you do to get sent here? You can hear her teeth grinding as she growls at you. Do not ask. Now well, let's just take a look around then. This guy's going to say, howdy, do I know your, your fuzzy sil silhouette? Doesn't seem familiar. Oh, but just passing through, what do you do here? I'm supposed to be a scout, but I went and broke my only pair of glasses without him and can't see darn thing. I could try and get you a new pair. I'd be much obliged. You're here, there's a jeweler not too far off from here. I could probably make grand me a pair of glasses. Okay, so we'll go to the jeweler. First off, let's go upstairs and use the binoculars. Get an abandoned mine. General, what's his name? A medal of adequacy. Whoa. That's gotta be anything better than I have on that. It's slightly worse Moxie, but better everything else. So I'll, I'll deal with slightly less Moxie for better everything else. Howdy, what's wrong? Howdy, oh, Willikers. I did a pretty good job as the general's personal assistant, but I got fired and reassigned here. Everything was great at first. I'm pretty good at scheduling, and I can write shorthand. I'm an A-plus boot polisher. But then the general went and decided he'd look more serious and sophisticated with a bow tie and expected me to do the tying for him. No good? No, I could do a sheep shank, a bow line, a clover hitch, but for life of me, I can't figure out how to make a bow tie and look right. The general sent me here with one to practice on and said not to come back till I got it. Okay, grab the two ends like this, right? You want this side a little shorter. That end crosses up on top and then under while the other side sort of zigzags. See, then you bring the upper side bait straight down, pull back around and folds under there, and you pull them through. Got it? Actually, I wear a bow tie. Quite often, and it's very simple to tie a bow tie. It's just like tying your shoe, but you're from the inside of the shoe. So if you go back and forth through time, so it finally gets it right. Think I've got it. Wait till I show the general. Good luck. He's out of here. That's one. You shoot yourself a wink. I like it. Be cruel to lose these people's supplies. Howdy, private cooker. How appropriate. Well, it would be if I knew how to cook. Seems to be the trouble. Well, I only got two ingredients here. Can't figure out how to combine them. We're gonna be fashion toast. Try, try to help him with the metaphor. What if you thought of the toast as a shoe. And think of the corned beef as a hole in the ground. So I should put the corned beef under it. Sure, let's try again. What if you think of it as a shingle? And the corned beef as your head. Okay, that's not it. Uh, that's a road map. And uh, Shinola. Okay. Uh, a shingle and Shinola. Look at your elbow and your head. Okay, think of it as your elbow and a hole in the ground. Think of it as a road map and a hole in the ground. A shoe and a corn cob pipe. All right, so shingle, corn cob pipe. Shingle, Shinola. Shingle, your head. Shingle, a hole in the ground. All right, so not shingle. A road map and a corn cob pipe. A road map and Shinola. A road map and your head. A road map and a hole in the ground. 
a shoe and a corncob pipe. A shoe and shinola. There it is. Or corned beef on top. I don't know what shinola is. Oh, it must be a wax. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get that now. My wife's in town. Yay! Well, no, I mean, she's in the States. But I'm very much excited. Okay, all in a day's work. I was going to say, if I now have blurry vision because of this. Should probably take the food. Tempting. This horse has four left legs. They call me Private Bow Legs. I can see why you seem uncomfortable. You ain't kidding. Look at my legs. They're bent so far out, I can hardly touch both knees at once. Walking hurts like a dickens. Captain said it keeps you from riding a horse? Yeah, they're too wide. Horse slips right out between them. I think I could ride a mule, though. What with them being a tad lower to the ground? You don't need a mule. It's fixable. Hold still a minute. Oh, okay. You normalize his legs. They're much straighter now. I guess I can't deny that. I'm supposed to be a cannoneer, but I'm terrible at loading cannons. They always explode. Except not the way they're supposed to. Or they don't explode at all. The only time I ever seemed to fire right, the cannonball... Excuse me. <clears throat> knocked my sergeant's hat off and he was standing behind me. I still can't figure out how that happened. So they assigned me to this loser squad and said I can't report back for proper duty until I figured out how to load a cannon. Here's the book. Let's see. Oh, you stick the... <laughs> you take the stick back out before you put the cannonball in. Well, it certainly sounds easier. He carefully follows along the directions of the book and successfully fires the cannonball over the wall of the fort. Wow, I did great. I'm on my way. And infinite goblins in the storage shed. Important gun storage. No goblins. You open the door, crack, and take a peek. Naturally, the shed is crammed full of goblins to the ceiling. They're barely recognizable as individuals. You try and talk to them, but they're just babbling. Ink a few out of there. A few meaning one. Of course. Wow, he pistol whips? That's so mean. Did she die die? Because that would be sad. Nope, she's back. Wow, we don't want him to do his damage, so... Why do you go after Susie? That's so mean. Wow, that's real bad. So she's probably toasted. Ooh, he went after me. Nice. Goodbye, sir. Have a nice day. Goblin trash sack. Goblin coffee. All right, well, we'll deal with them later. Howdy, Cap. One half of scoop ball. 10-4, I'll take care of it. All right, so let's go get this goof ball's uh, stuff. Jeweler's cabin. Gonna get me some glasses. Catch a glimpse of something colorful out of the corner of your eye. Green you know, aura, my it's uh, same as a Frisco Vipers, apparently. Wow, oh, there's a lot of them. Alright. Wow, that's that's not good. That's real bad in point of fact. That is super mean. Especially since they're gonna do 30 freaking oh god. Yeah, that's bad. Where's my anti-poison thing? Alright. Forget about that poison stuff. Alright, and then we're gonna just fire on... 231 some odd damage, so this should get rid of both. Well, at least, yeah. And she'll fire on that one. And then maybe I'll survive. I'm not gonna survive. I didn't plan this right. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Yep, dead. Ah, oh, persons. It's fine. I'm still okay. It's fine. It's fine. Truly shop inside. What do you want to wager that this guy's not going to be able to help me right away? There's a goblin. Hello, chap. Why, hello, welcome to Master Gerald's jewelry shop. Howdy, are you Master Gerald? Oh no, Master Gerald is back there at his workbench. I'm just his assistant and translator. Goblin Jewelsmith? You bet in your britches, Sonny, and not forgetting it. He says that's right, the finest jeweler in the territory. Well, what do you know? I don't see anything on display, though. 
Maestro Gerald only does bespoke work. If you bring in a sufficiently valuable gemstone, I'll craft it into a fine ring for a fee. No trash rocks. I need a pair of eyeglasses for a nearly blind watchtower lookout. Can you make them for me? The clerk translates a question for Master Gerald, who thinks about it and nods. Having some old soda bottles for grinding down should working fine. He says, yes, we have some of the finest stuff, whatever. The clerk invites you to have a seat in the living area while Master Gerald gets to work cutting and grinding some glass into lenses and letting them into the wire frames. You flip through a goblin magazine while you wait. The lead article seems to be about social interacting with humans and the value of occasionally pretending to be dumber than you actually are. Okay, close enough for government working. Master Gerald has completed your spectacles. Okay. I have a diamond. Oh, I don't have any stuff. Right, well, we'll get there. What's this? Get rid of my eyebrows. Interesting. Weird, but interesting. Back to the fort. We will not fight some snakes. They're nasty. Several loud gunshots ring out as you round a large cluster of boulders and you dive into cover. Peeking cautiously around the corner, you discover a goblin shooting a large pistol at a pile of nailed together driftwood. Hello? Oh, hello. What doing? Targets practicing? None. Sculpting. Look. You take another look and from the right angle, the driftwood does kind of look like an owl. Albeit one that's been shot a bunch of times with a pistol. Talk to them, fight them, and help them. Let's help them. I got a sandalwood ring. No, that's unfortunate. Could have done more. Hey, buddy. Here, try these on. Never realized what a dump this place is. Hooray. Alright. What do I get now, lady? 300 XP. Finally means I'm out of this hellhole, too. If you ever cross paths again, I really owe you. Now I can take their stuff. Back to Frisco here. El Vibrato, absolutely. Um, I think we just get rid of it. I don't really need to use the uh, Vibrato repellent or whatever it is. Got some scrap. Moon bits, huh? Battery little bits of moon rock. I feel like somebody wanted moon rock. Somebody, wanted, somebody definitely wanted moon rock. Telltale signs of a train robbery. Let's follow him. we got a couple minutes. You jump onto Tina's back and ride like the wind. Which is apparently not at all because you can't ride. Anyway, following the railroad tracks back into the desert. When you finally catch up, you stand up on Tina's saddle and leap onto the back of the train like a real badass, just barely catching the edge of the roof and pulling yourself up. Here's hoping you don't have to do that again. Your stuntman could have been killed. Looks like Susie decided not to join you on account of not having a stuntman, so you're on your own until you get back to Frisco. Atop the stolen train. Hey, you. You're feeling neither fear nor scared. Take it back by force. Nope. You go into the cart. Pickled pig knuckles. Hand fruit. This end up. Everyone loves keys. Oh my god, I need safe cracking. Ah, it's a plot brand lock. Well, I don't have any keys, so we're gonna have to take them by force. Oh, this is not gonna be that difficult. Obviously, we'll have to do this like eight times, but whatever. He ran down a little farther. That's fine. Somebody just built a rickety-ass bridge between these train cars. Very panic-inducing. Gentlemen. I don't see the point in fighting these guys. I certainly don't want to have to lose a day. Mind the gap. I can't pick the lock. I need a needle. Okay, fine. These guys are so preoccupied with the door to the rear, they don't notice you prowling around behind them. One in the back is a shiny key. Dining car. Oh, we'll grab the key, obviously. Thanks, buddy. You've never wanted anything more in your life than to lift up the stone and see what's under it, but you're not sure you can muster the amount of culinary expertise it requires to properly reveal the dust such presumed quality. 50 mysticality. Can I get up to that? Maybe. I have 2,000 XP almost. We should get Deadeye. 
Increase our shoot and Annie. Twice. Let's do that. Let's get our mysticality up. Twice, and we'll get our muscle up. I need seven mysticality. Find me seven mysticality. That's only five. I need seven. Look about a feud cube is amazing. Uh, right. Whoa, Galactarius, man. We shall investigate. A shaving cream pie. It's no good to eat, but it's very aerodynamic. It's welded shut. Fair enough. We're gonna go long. There's Norton. Correct his grammar? No, no, no. I want to throw this cream pie. Curses! Uh, Alright, we'll fight the knife guy. Oh yeah, it's fine. The rifle through his pockets are empty, except for his luggage. His luggage is number three. I've hidden the key to the forward passenger car in my luggage to make it easier for me to murder everyone in the sleeper car. Sincerely, the train murderer. P.S. Come to the roof in the sleeping car in the next 55 minutes if you want a murdering. Three it is, then. You open the door to the third passenger compartment and find nobody inside. And since the note from the murderer said he was going to be on the roof of the train, that means he couldn't be in this passenger compartment. Since there's no one inside this passenger compartment, whoever the compartment belongs to can only be by process of elimination on the roof. Which means the person who rented the compartment must be the murderer, probably. The only clue you find is her luggage ticket, though, is the number three on it. Well, I already knew that. Passenger car key. Thanks. You finally make it to the passenger car, one car back from the locomotive, which by the confusing if you thought locomotive meant the entire train, so I could just say that the engine, except that they also refers to the engine itself, that is, the actual steam engine that makes the train go, and not just the frontmost car of the train, anyway, you're in the passenger car. Suddenly, Norton clambers in the window. He must have dramatically clung to the side of the train in order to reveal at the last minute that he hadn't actually been defeated. Dang it. He runs into the foremost car of the train and locks the door. What a jerk. You can get some of the passengers to help break down the door and arrest him? Or maybe you could kick down the door and shoot him until he can't bother anybody anymore. Up to you. Professional looking guy is frowning. Uh, can you help me with something? Uh, sorry, I'm busy. Ask my wife. Or my daughter. God knows if she could do with something to keep her occupied. What are you working on? It's quite academic. I'm sure you wouldn't understand. Try me. I'm a scholar of foreign antiquities. I'm attempting to resolve this ancient conundrum from the Far East. Okay, done. Sudoku. My little brother thinks they're for babies. What? Look, this box can't be three or seven because you've got those there and there, and this has to be four, which means it's five here and nine here, and if that's a nine, that can't be two, it's two, it's one. Sorry, will you help me break down the dungeon door? All right, cool. The woman just ignores me. It's a cultist. It's a lie. We're never getting into Frisco. Frisco probably doesn't even exist. I had percussive maintenance. Bam! <laughs> it's an episode of Airplane all of a sudden. Listen, we're going to get to Frisco, but we got to bust up in the locomotive. You got it. Overweight man in a three-piece suit and a bowler. What is it? Crazy jerk calling himself Emperor Norton has hijacked the train. I need volunteers to help me bust down the door. Will you help me? Sounds quite strenuous, perhaps even dangerous. Come on, please! I don't think so. I'm quite comfortable. I prefer to avoid stress. Pretty please! Pretty please with sugar on top. Pretty please with gravy on top. Please, 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 please. I'll stop asking if you say yes. Please, 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 please. All right, fine, send me alone. Got it. <laughs> a knitter. Excuse me, ma'am. I'll keep to myself. I have no desire to get involved. I'm sure everything will sort itself in the end. In the meantime, I have plenty of wool. Lady, I don't think you understand the seriousness of this situation. If Norton gets away with this, his power in Frisco will be limitless. If the city council won't be able to block his horrible new tax increase. Well, for a start, he's demanding a 4,000% high price hacker on yarn. Hi there. You want to help me out with something really important? Bad guy took over the engine car and he needed him to tape help break down the door. Hey now, that's not a good attitude. Don't ever let anyone tell you just anything because you're just a girl. We'll bust that crook's face in. That's the spirit. But you gotta pay me in advance. I really like stuffed animals. How about a kitty? Carnival trash. Maybe I had the whole set of them. Oh my god. I'll be right back. Excuse me, ma'am. Cray Psycho has taken over the train. Oh my, I'd certainly be of any help with that. I'm very conflict averse. What if I told you he hates birds and is determined to outlaw them from the territory after he sees his power? It's very sly, but I know you're only saying that because you saw the book I was reading. Any other ideas to convince me? I guess not. Crap. 
Is it enough? Open up, Norton. All right, I'm coming in. Me and this army. Break down the door very impressively, though. It would have been even better if you had some torches in those old-fashioned rakes. Norton is backed up in the corner of the engineer's compartment next to the engineer. Looks over his shoulder at you and shrugs. So-called Emperor Norton, you're under arrest. The crime of being a total ass. It's not illegal. This one, I'm in town. Everybody grab him. Except you, Mr. Engineer. I can see you're busy driving. Actually, if you could turn around and head back to Frisco, that'd be great. Ugh, let's go. This isn't over. You haven't heard the last of me. Tell that to the judge, Norton. Prison judge. All right, we're back in Frisco. So we're going to leave it here. And next time, we will continue on. For now, though, we are very much out of time. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, click the like button. Subscribe to the channel to stay updated to everything as it happens. Until next time, cheers. Cheers.